Okay. Now this one, this one's weird. This one is something you want to avoid. Latin squares are great. I got no problem with those. Um, I really, I even have, I, this is worse than a, this is worse than hierarchical design. Um, okay, most designs assume equal ends. If you notice that we've always, put, I was always been writing it, little n minus one. I haven't been saying little n in this cell, little n in this cell. So most designs assume equal ends. Except for the simple ones. One way analysis of variance doesn't actually need equal ends. There are ways that it can be dealt with. The interesting thing is the way they used to think it was dealt with, I'm not even going to show you, because they told us this formula when I was in undergrad, and it turns out it was wrong. Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it works all, it's almost right. It's very close. It works OK, but uh, technically it screws the calculus up. It's not a big deal, though. You can have unequal ends. It's, that's all, it's all been fixed. It's no big deal. OK, let's say you have unequal ends. Now, again, here I'm talking about wildly unequal ends. You know, you got three people in one group and 27 in another. That's bad. Because think about it, it's all about variance. There's going to be more variance in the group of three people than the group of 27 people. The number's going to be higher. Right? Because you're dividing by n minus 1. And if that thing is bigger in one than it is in another, it's going to make that number smaller. So the fewer numbers, the, more, the, the bigger the variance. Right? Okay. So you could under, you know, what about estimating the missing values? So you got 10, 10, 10, 8. Well, we could estimate the other two. We could do that. We could use the mean. The average for that cell, I just put two more in there. Makes the math easier. Or the median. We know that the median is affected by extreme scores. Maybe we want to use the median value. And in fact, SPSS has, a, has, a spe, has an actual um, <coughs> function called missing. And you can fix the missing values. It'll tell you. And you, you can just tell it how to, how to estimate values. Okay. Do you include the interaction? So do you say there's only main effects, or do you assume there's an interaction? So maybe you break the table down and see there's an interaction, put it in. Those are, that's a real question. It seems like a very odd question. No matter what you do to estimate missing values, you have lost degrees of freedom. You have to remember that in your analysis. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with estimating missing values. People do it. It's OK. But you lose degrees of freedom because you fixed another value. Those numbers have less freedom to vary because you fixed one. You said, well, it's 7. If you say it's 7, that number wasn't free to vary. You just said it was 7. And this isn't the same. For example, um, now I've never seen this, but a, a, a graduate student, a uh, fellow student, uh, I guess he was, oh, it's the same guy that did the, 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 the hospital burn study I told you about. Or we have to analyze it. He was reviewing an article. He was in uh, for 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 a journal, and which he what, but he had to graduate school. You've got a few publications. You start getting articles through different journals. And he was looking at it. And what the people did is they didn't find significance. So what they did is they just doubled their sample size. Well, okay, sure, more power. No, they just doubled the numbers. They put the same like seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. Four, four, six, six, sixteen, sixty. Suddenly, they you can't do that. That's called cheating. Because <laughs> you can, you can, you know, you actually probably could. You could statistically do it. And if you lost all those degrees of freedom, but if you doubled it, you lost all your degrees of freedom. Now you can't do any of that analysis, which he very quickly pointed out to the people. And of course, the article didn't get published. The system usually works pretty well. There's got to be other ways to deal with it. Um. Okay. All the things I've shown you so far are things called type 1 sums of squares that are calculated, you know, some of the uh, row mean minus the grand mean squared over the number of rows. That kind of thing. When Fisher originally conceived an L variance, that's the kind of sums of squares he invented. That I guess maybe discovered.
They're actually fine if the ends are equal. They work, it works just fine if the ends are equal. That kind of calculation. It stops working so well when they're unequal and it gets worse and worse the more unequal the ends are. So the more the, the number of subjects per cell diverges from each other, the worse it gets. Okay. So there's type two, of course. They're good when there's a missing value. They really are. They, they, they actually deal with it fine. They have a, a downside. I'm not going to tell you to calculate these. It's um, unpleasant. But if there's an interaction, type two sums of squares don't work properly. And this may sound very strange, but if you calculate the sum of squares for A first rather than B first, if there's an interaction, it screws everything up. Like there are different solutions than if you do B first rather than A first. If there's no interaction, it doesn't matter. But if there's an interaction, the order that you calculate something matters. It affects things because of the way the calculation works. So type twos actually, the two type twos have a use, by the way, they have a use in regression when we talk about it, but they're not useful really for analysis of variance. Type three sums of squares. If you notice when you play law with SPSS, it actually says type three sums of squares. Type three sums of squares are calculated using matrix algebra. So you probably don't know if there's an interaction or not. Uh, type three sums of squares don't care which is great. So in fact, that's what we use. That's what our software uses. When we teach it to you, the type ones are what's used. Because frankly, if you have equal ends, type one equals type two equals type three. So they end up being conceptually the same anyway. All software now uses type three sets okay. So if there's no, if there is an interaction, and you have, or not, but if you have equal ends, type 1 sums of squares equal type 2 sums of squares equal type 3 sums of squares. We just, the software uses type threes. And I talk about using equal ends all the time because when I show you those partition sums of squares and degrees of freedom, I'm doing it with equal ends. So it's perfectly valid. So if the ends are equal, 1, 2s, and 3s are all the same. Beautiful. So that problem, by the way, with if there's an interaction, you put what the bedroom order you calculate it, it screws up type twos. That's only true if there's unequal ends. If there's equal ends, it doesn't matter. Yay! Of course there's a type four. Of course there's a type four. What are type four sums of squares for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. <laughs> but then somebody got the reference. I appreciate that a couple of you little people there. You guys, that's good. Okay, what type four sums of squares are for are empty cells. Not just missing values, actually empty cells. So you got A1, B1, A2, B2, A2, B1, and then A1, B2, there's nothing there. It's like no data. So what a type four sums of squares somehow deal with that. Ooh. Mostly through magic. It's mostly magic from what I understand. <laughs> it's fascinating. Uh, there's no unique solution, however. When, and that's exactly like it sounds. You know how I said with the quiz, things like, you know, there's A effect, no B effect, no interaction, B grand B to six, and I tell you there's an infinite number of right answers? That's right. It's also the case with type four sums of squares, what it does is it makes an estimate. Um, but there's a, it's not a unique estimate. The next time you run it, it comes out differently. Dude. <laughs> so for example, look at this. Now this is, by the way, um, I would, you know what I'd do, I'd, I'd go get the data. But these are, let's say these are cell, <laughs> let's, let's say these are cell means, four, two, two. She just for symmetry, it looks like a four goes there. Sure. Or, let's see, well, let's pretend there's no interaction. Okay, so what we could do is we could work that out and say, oh, I don't know, what should we put here? Let's see, four, and two, and six. So it's gonna, we want, let's say we want no B effect. So yeah, let's put four there. Maybe we don't want an interaction. Hmm, how are we gonna do that? We can, you, you can break it down and figure it out, figure it out that way. Or let's say, 
maybe it will. It's more twos than fours. What about putting a two there? It seems like that's the mode. Maybe the mode has a use. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know what goes there. And you don't either. And I could sit here, you know, what about a thousand? What's wrong with a thousand? <laughs> what about minus pi? <laughs> oh, it, it could be anything. Right? There is no answer. Those are all correct answers. There's actually no right answer to this and no wrong answer. That's the problem. So now, unbalanced designs you can deal with. Uh, the software deals with them just fine, does type three sums of squares, and conceptually you can still imagine them as deviations. In fact, that's how they're calculated, just done differently than I've done with the uh, regular uh, algebra. It shows you it's done with matrix algebra, but it's conceptually the same thing. So it's not like a, a big deal. Um, actual empty cells. The best way to analyze data with empty cells is not to collect data with empty cells. Right? That's what um, my stats prof in, in, in grad school used to say that all the time. Right? The best way to analyze unbalanced data is not to collect it. So just finish the damn experiment. And this is what happened. I told you guys about the iBank thing. They had a bunch of empty cells, and I was like, I don't know what to do. Nick, what you, you know you could do here? Here's, an, here's one thing you could do. Let's say you've done the experiment, you can't do anything else. What I would do is do a one-way analysis of variance. This, 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 between groups. It's the only thing, you could do that. You can't do anything about interaction, you can't talk about A effect or B effect, but at least you can say the groups are different. You can salvage that. Yeah, Jay? Why don't you just drop the two and then do the Drop the two, which like one? Like the A, the A two? Yeah. You could do that, but then you say that, uh, now we can't do anything about that interaction between A and B. And maybe we were interested in that. We probably set this experiment up because we were interested in interaction. Then why didn't you collect this? Well, it's theoretical. I don't oh. know because you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. One. <laughs> One is an idiot. The people, this does happen. And you might end up with empty cells um, if it were a really big design. And what you have to do, instead of playing with type 4 sums of squares, I would, the first thing I would do is say, if I had a big design, like a, like a six by six, and I had nobody in a certain group, the first thing to try is to go recruit people to be in that, that level, in that group. You just have to, it's easiest. The next thing you do is estimate values with uh, cell means or something, row and column means or something like that. I just would not try analyzing it with empty cells and having um, type four cells of squares because you're just not, it, it'll, you write it once, and then you do it again, and it'll, it, depending on the software, for example, it'll give you different answers. There's not a unique solution to this mathematically. And that's a real pain. You don't want that. The one thing you want is to be able, at the end of the experiment, to say, I have an A effect, no B effect, and then an I can't answer that question. Other questions? That was actually, it's a fine question. Yeah, Christine. Well, it's unequal when one of them is zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and type fours, by the way, if the ends are equal, the ones, twos, threes, and fours are all the same. Yeah. Fours are used, fours are almost just used theoretically. No one really uses them in analyzing data. It's all, it's, the weird thing is it's an option in statistical packages, and the problem is people look at it and go, oh, you can do that? <laughs> There's a real downside <laughs> to using computers to do stats. The, the, the real upside is you can do really complicated analyses quickly. The downside is you can do really complicated analyses you don't understand quickly. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, most people have never even heard of type 4 census scores. It's the kind of thing you hear about in graduate school when you get to like the PhD level stats and you're actually reading statistics journals. It's fun. And by fun, I mean it's not fun. <laughs> I mean, and I like statistics, but reading the Journal of the American Statistical Association okay. is not fun to me. Other questions? Fine questions. All right, so we're done for today because I know this stuff's intense and we're doing really fine on time. Um, next time we'll start talking about uh, correlation and simple regression. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>